This time I'm going to tell you who all the different players are that have a role in charging infrastructure. This whole field is essentially still a greenfield situation, so everything is still possible. But the roles that need to be filled are becoming increasingly clear. What's not so clear is who will fulfill that role and what combinations of role will evolve into the future and how much power will lie with which role, what role. All the more reasons to really understand those different roles. And that's what this video is about. Now, for car makers, this is a strange new territory. They naturally see themselves in the lead, as evidenced by the fact that they usually call charging infrastructure electric vehicle support equipment. In reality, they have no say over most charging locations, and EV drivers want to go and use them all, right? You don't want to forego every charger that is not property of Tesla. Furthermore, the whole energy system is in flux, and the EV has an important role to play as we saw in the video on smart charging. We know pretty sure they will want cars that uh, use the energy at the moment that are best for them. So their role in the charging infrastructure is mainly to finally standardize the sockets, at least per continent, and to make sure their vehicles can be interfaced with charge points and with the electricity grid. They could expand their role by usurping other roles that I will still describe. An important new role is charge point manufacturer. Equipment will be needed in large numbers um, the world over, and the main issues to look for in a charge point, apart from ruggedness and safety, of course, are that it's reliable and future-proof. That probably means you should go for amp ample computing power, don't skimp on that, probably li Linux, and it should support an open standard like OCPP. Remote monitoring and smart charging are things you can still have as a USP. Things I see happening quickly are the integration of so-called smart meters, according to the specs given by the grid operator, and the option to use signing and maybe a ledger, a distributed ledger. Once every content has a single plug on the car side, chargers will include a cable to connect them to the car directly. Okay, users, most important uh, uh, role in the, in the whole system, of course. Users will look at the utility of charge point in a different way. If they buy one for at home, they will want one that is future-proof and independent of the car maker. So it's still useful if you buy a different car. If they use public chargers, they will want to know where they are located. And when a charge point is broken or unavailable, it sounds trivial, but this is still the biggest grievance for many users in the Netherlands, that we haven't gotten this right. They also want interoperability and roaming, for example. You want to be able to charge in another country the same way you can charge in your own. Logically, right? Their role in the whole energy system will change from consumers to prosumers, especially when they have solar panels, heat pumps or electric vehicles. Then a charge point operator, or CPO. This is the, the, the party that facilitates the requesting, selecting and placing of a charge point and then um, uh, 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 exploits it, how do you say that, uh, does the maintenance, all that sort of stuff. They can also uh, offer remote assistance and repair. If multiple people can use the charge point, the CPO can make the availability of the charge point known on websites and to he can facilitate authentication, metering, billing. An interesting new function, by the way, is saving money by facilitating smart charging. There are multiple variables that can be optimized on, namely uh, when you do smart charging. Grid congestion, voltage and frequency. To do this properly, the CPO must be able to communicate with the user, the mobility service provider, the local grid operator, the national grid operator, the energy producer and the aggregator. So a lot of communication going on there. The open uh, standard OCPP helps the CPO to keep the charge point hardware interchangeable and the open standard OCPI facilitates roaming and communication with the other parties just mentioned. We talked about e-mobility service provider before. It is unclear if this is the name the industry will settle on, but the functional role is an important one to grasp. 
The problem is that an EV driver will visit charge points of many different charge point operators. So you need another party. And you don't want to get a new RFID or a card or an app or anything uh, at all um, uh, if you visit a new charge point operator of a new charge point. So we need someone who contracts all the different charge point operators and offers them uh, offers a nice package to both the users and the charge point operators um, and uh, yeah, it functions a little bit like a credit card uh, company. An interface to many different vendors, but preferably more flexible and at lower transaction costs, which is totally doable by, by the way and something that distributed ledgers can play a role in. Municipalities have an important role in street charging because they are responsible for the public space, of course. They have to provide the, charging sp uh, the parking space often some funding, and in return they can set the requirements to make sure that all the charge points are interoperable from the user perspective. They can also contribute, contribute greatly to the process of uh, placing them by providing a shared environment for all the stakeholders, such as the user, maybe the dealer, the charge point operator, the grid operator, the municipality, and different subcontractors. It also really helps if they make sure there is one contractor for the municipality, grid operator and charge point operator who does all the physical activities in one go. So please integrate the different contractors. We are not there yet in the Netherlands, so I hope you do better, by the way. National governments must enable regulation for smart grids, including incen incentives. Sorry, they must uh, regulation and incentives. They can really help to kickstart the process if they provide some small financial incentives to start knowledge sharing. That's a really cost-effective option to, to, to get things moving. Pilots can also be really helpful uh, if you want to kickstart development, uh, 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 especially when you have multiple users, uh, multiple parties involved in the pilot. Energy suppliers must supply energy to charge points, of course, but should also cooperate in establishing a mechanism that can reward smart charging. The problem we often see is that energy suppliers are used to being a very important party, but in this whole process they only have one rather small role. This often leads to obstruction for smart charging, um, um, because they say, oh, I've only got a small role, so I'll be warned. The same is true for grid operators. Um, on the one hand, they are really interested in smart charging, but on the other hand, other hand, they are not really used to cooperating with others, and especially not on the time scales that innovators need. Speed is not their strong point. To make matters worse, many are incentivized to put more hardware, more copper, more aluminium into the ground, even if that's more expensive for society. In one respect, they are very, very, very useful, at least in the Netherlands. Often they are the only stakeholder with a really long-term perspective. The CEO of the biggest grid operator in the Netherlands used to say to me, for me, if you look at contracts I sign, 2050 is yesterday. Now the transition system operator. That's a less dominant player, but frequen uh, frequency regulation is, is really important, of course, on the grid, and smart charging can be uh, really useful in that respect, so don't forget them. They also have a role in electricity markets in most countries, and opening those electricity markets up to aggregators is, is really important. Then, the balance responsible party. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's complex, it's complicated. I cannot go into detail, please look at the support in literature. But in essence, it means somebody must make sure that every user's demand is predicted in advance, and if demand is unexpected, it has to be fixed. Balance responsible. What we want in a future smart grid is that the user can give his own responsibility to someone else that is innovative. The aggregator brings together supply and demand in the smart grid of the future. In the case of electric vehicles, by steering smart charging, a whole bunch of them, um, um, and thereby, yeah, basically they are creating uh, a large buffer for electric electricity grid from electric vehicles. I cannot stress enough that opening up this new role to in innovative startups is going to be extremely important for the efficient deployment of the renewables. 
Charging infrastructure is one of the first big developments for grids in over a century. We are using it in connection with internet technology in order to move towards a decentralized, bidirectional smart grid. This creates big shifts in the role and requires removal of a lot of antiquated regulation and the introduction of new open standards. But if we do it right, we can democratize our energy system and move towards clean and abundant energy for all at a lower price. Thank you.